Ever wonder how some streamers put together some wild camera effects like this? Or this? Or even this? Wow. Well, look no further. All of these are done with something called shaders. And in this video, I'll show you how to add them to OBS Studio, and we'll also go through a few common examples. Hi friends, I'm Flair. I'm a variety streamer over at twitch.tv slash Flair, and so far my favorite part of streaming is learning new tricks and then sharing them with other new streamers. Today we're talking about shaders in OBS. I love these shaders so much that most of my overlay these days is simply creative use of shaders. We'll go through a couple of the examples later in this video, and we'll also get into nested scenes a bit, but we'll start with going through how to download and install these shaders into OBS Studio. A quick note, this method is only for OBS Studio on Windows at the moment, but a similar method likely exists for Mac as well. If you've used shaders before, let me know in the comments which one is your favorite, and if you haven't, then ask any question you might have about them and I'll do my best to get you an answer. The first thing we need to do is get the shaders installed. There's a wonderful plugin for OBS Studio called OBS Shader Filter that's available directly from the developer's GitHub page. You don't need a GitHub account to download it. You simply go to the link provided in the description, scroll down to the section labeled Assets, and download the file OBS Shader Filter Win.zip to a location of your choice. Once you've extracted the files, highlight the data and OBS plugin folders and copy them. Now, go to wherever your OBS Studio is installed, which by default is C Program Files, sometimes C Program Files x64, and in the OBS Studio folder, click Paste. You may be required to give administrative access and be asked to confirm some file overrides, so click yes to all this stuff and then you're done. Now, open OBS Studio, close it if it was already open, and then click your camera source, or really any source, and go to Filters and choose the plus to add a new filter. If you see an option for User Defined Shader, then you've installed the shader successfully. One thing to note, there are a number of places that share shader files for this plugin, and these additional shaders can be installed in the Data, OBS Plugins, OBS Shader Filter, Examples folder within your OBS folder. I'll be compiling a list of some of these places in the Tech Tips section of my Discord, so find that link in the description and I'll be happy to talk about OBS, shaders, or you can just share pictures of your cat. I want to take a moment to thank you all for watching and ask that if you found this video useful at all, please hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and leave a comment. It helps me out immensely, and it's free. I'll answer any question you ask in the comments, and if I don't know the answer, I'll help you find it. Anyway, now that our plugin is installed, let's take a look at what we can do with it. I'll write a comment about what shaders I used for the intro effects, but I want to go through a few more practical examples and show how I'm using some of these filters in my own overlay. When I switch out to my just chatting scene from the main, you'll see that the desktop or game is still there in the background, but kind of floating around and changing colors. And if I go to the Be Right Back screen, it changes again to kind of a spotlight effect. This is done by the use of two things, nested scenes, which I have a whole video about, and shader filters. If you take a look at the scenes themselves, you'll see that the far background element is another scene called Live Desktop or just chatting desktop or be right back desktop, depending on which scene I'm on, as opposed to a display capture source. Each of these is its own scene, which in turn contains another nested scene called desktop layer one. This scene is the one that actually has the display capture or game capture source. Why all the nested scenes? Because you'll see that in those intermediate scenes, I have set up filters on the entire scene. This lets me use the same source with a number of different filters on it for different scenes. For my just set chatting scene, it's using a color correction filter mostly to desaturate, and then two shader filters. One to add a vignette, and then another one called Rotato to do the floaty rotation, and also some hue rotation. To set up one of these filters, all you do is press the plus to add a new filter, and choose the user defined shader filter. Then choose Load Shader Text from File and press Browse. Choose either a .shader file here or a .effect file to load either a shader or an effect. If you're choosing an effect file, you also need to check the Use Effect File checkbox. Fair warning when loading effects, sometimes OBS will crash. I found the best way around this is to load the effect file, then click the Use Effect File checkbox and immediately quit OBS. Once reloaded, the effect will usually be working and you can go in and tweak the configuration. Each of these shaders and filters will have its own unique set of configuration options, depending on what the shader or effect does. And like any other filter, you can play around with those options until you get things just the way you want. You should now have everything you need to add shader filters to your OBS scenes and sources, and you can even toggle on and off these filters with software like StreamerBot, so you can use them for chat commands, channel point redemptions, or Twitch event alerts. Let me know in the comments how you would like to use these shaders, and I'll do my best to help you out. I'd love to see what you do with them. Thanks again for watching, and as always, remember to spread love, not hate.